Now we'll talk about things floating in the air. And specifically, we're talking about things that float because of the buoyancy provided by the air displaced. We're not talking about something like an airplane that stays aloft because of the power provided by the engines, or a bird that stays aloft because of the forces exerted by the bird's wings. We're talking about something that floats in the air for the same reasons something would float in the water. And a good example would be a helium balloon. These are the kind of things that you see at parties all the time and that everybody's familiar with. A helium balloon floats because it's filled with helium, and helium is less dense than regular air. Helium is, in fact, one of the lightest gases that there is. It's the second lightest element that there is. Only hydrogen weighs less than helium. But balloons that you get at the grocery store or that you get at a party shop or something are never filled with hydrogen for safety reasons. Hydrogen is very, very flammable. So balloons are typically filled with helium. So if you imagine a balloon here, and let's say it's filled with helium, so I'll just write HE inside. That's the chemical symbol for helium. The air around the balloon is made of oxygen, and I'm going to write O2, and that means two oxygen atoms stuck together to make an oxygen molecule, and it's made of nitrogen, and I'll put N2. So that represents a nitrogen molecule, two nitrogen atoms bonded together. So there's all of this nitrogen and oxygen around here, mostly nitrogen. The atmosphere is around 80% nitrogen. And the balloon there is full of helium. Now in reality, I've just drawn some letters, in reality there are billions of atoms of atmosphere around here, billions of molecules, and this is um, nitrogen and oxygen and some other things, but mostly nitrogen and oxygen. And there are billions and billions of atoms of helium inside. But the helium atoms weigh less because helium atoms themselves are very, very tiny. And there's not much mass in there for their, for their size. So the helium balloon displaces some of the atmosphere. It displaces some of the oxygen and nitrogen. And it weighs less than the atmosphere that it displaces. So it experiences an upward buoyant force. And Archimedes' principle describes what's going on. So Archimedes' principle works in the air as well as in the water. A weather balloon works the same way. Weather balloons are larger and they go up a lot higher. Weather balloons typically, they might be several feet across and they're typically filled with hydrogen just because hydrogen is more buoyant and these are flying way up in the atmosphere they're away from people and they're not near any sources of flame or spark and even if they did catch on fire there's nothing around for them to damage so hydrogen is used there because hydrogen is more buoyant and you can get more altitude with a weather balloon filled with hydrogen and they usually lift a small little package of electronics some sensors and some radio equipment and they go up into the upper atmosphere they go up 20 or 30 miles above the earth's surface which is really pretty high and they, they will float up until they reach a point where the atmosphere has thinned out such that the air displaced by the balloon is then equal to the weight of the balloon and it will stop rising at that point it can't go any higher once the air thins out there's less buoyant force because the air displaced when the air is thinner the air displaced weighs less so they only rise to a certain point but filled with hydrogen they can rise up to 20 or 30 miles above the earth's surface and they carry this little package of electronic components that will radio information back to a weather station on earth information about the temperature the humidity the wind the atmospheric pressure and this is all information that is constantly flowing into weather stations all over the world and then being reported to places like uh, radio stations and TV stations that tell us the weather or more importantly to places like the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration and places that report the weather to pilots, people who need to know up to the minute and current and accurate weather information. There are weather stations all over the world, not just weather balloons but weather stations on the ground as well, as well constantly gathering weather information and relaying it around and reporting it so that people who need to know have an idea of the weather. But weather balloons are typically filled with hydrogen. Here's a picture of one. This gives you an idea of how big it is because you see the truck over here in the diagram and then the weather balloon there is in the garage. And this is just a little package of electronics down at the bottom that's getting ready to be launched. 
So you can see it's a pretty big balloon, but it's not huge like a hot air balloon, but it's pretty big for a balloon. Here's another one. This looks like it's uh, being launched from a research station, maybe in Antarctica or something like that, down near the South Pole or on the Antarctic continent. There are several research stations that do various things. One of them is studying the weather.